There it was, exactly seven meters from the goal, in the center of the area, also known as the penalty spot. It was extra time. No one had scored yet. Playing as a goalkeeper, there she was. My mom, the best one at its position. And the striker, me, the best one too. This is a real story, my personal story, translated for the universal language of soccer. It is about my passion for soccer and the power of persuading people. And how you can convince anyone, I mean anyone, using these three special tools. In our everyday language, it would be more like, I wanted to go to the Libertadores final in Lima, Peru. But I needed to convince my mom that it was okay to lose my final exam of chemistry when I was about to fail the year. Yeah, I know. It was a complicated task. But let's start from the beginning. I'm Fabio Henrique. I'm 17 years old. I'm Brazilian. I love soccer. And I am a young, tremendous salesman. And the most important thing is that I can score any penalty. Which means I can convince anyone. And do you know why? Because I know how to use the three most special tools of communication. The persuasion, the universal language of soccer, and passion. I would like to explain to you guys how I mix my personal life with soccer and sales. And how this mixture can result in my ability to persuade. How do I score? How do I persuade? There are many ways to score a goal. By a perfect placed shot, by a power shot, or even by a panenka. Those three ways I just told you guys are in soccer language. But how do I translate those to our day-by-day -day language? The place it shot in soccer, it's when a soccer player kicks the ball straight to his objective. He sees the target and he aims the target, as simple as that. And he knows that he will reach it. On sales, it's a more strategic way of selling. You lead the customer to where you want to. You sell the reason, you sell the why. You make up in his mind so he knows that he really needs to buy what you're offering. In my life, the place it shot is similar to when I'm working on sales. But in this case, I want to make up my friends and family minds. So, convince them to listen to my arguments, to listen to my ideas. The power shot in soccer is a strong kick straight to the target. Basically on sales, it's the same thing. You go straight to the point. You sell what you need to sell. Now, in my life, for example, it, it's what I use with my mom. She doesn't like when I don't go straight to the point. I think she's afraid of being manipulated. So she likes me to go straight to what I want to. The panenka, as Fifth explains, is a short kick that lifts the ball high in the air, trying to uncover the goalkeeper and score a more beautiful and audacious goal. But as everybody knows, it sometimes can go wrong. On sales, it's also a more daring way to sell. Where you take risks, you try to innovate and sell the unpredictable. That are not in a ranked, ranked position in the market. Yet. Like you're trying to sell stocks or startups. In my life, I can give the example of the Libertadores final. That happened in Lima, Peru. In this scenario, it happened many unpredictable factors that I needed to work out. First, the airplane tickets that were sold out from Sao Paulo to Lima. Second, the game tickets that we bought not knowing if Flamengo were go was going to the final. And third, and most important, my school year. Most specifically, my chemistry exam. And in the end, I needed to convince my mom, remember my mom, the goalkeeper, the one that wasn't going to allow me to score the goal? Yeah, there she was again. With all those unpredictable factors against me. To start, let me say about my school problem. I have never been the perfect student. I have always had my ups and downs, especially in chemistry. Kidding, in chemistry was just downs. Just to think about it, I got headaches. Okay, continue. The Libertadores game, coincidentally, happened in my final exam week. Yeah, very lucky me. But it was not just that. It can always get worse. When I saw the dates, I compared them. And it was in the exact same day of my chemistry final exam. Yeah, I know. Very lucky me. But wait, it can always get worse. And it was. 
much, 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 much worse. I was failing chemistry. So I reunited my parents in, at my living room and I talked to them about my school problem and how I wanted to go to the Libertadores game. So I begged a little bit and they said, you're not going to the game, you are on test weeks and you're failing the year. And then I said, but I can do the substitute test. And then they replied, but you are failing the year and substitute tests are more difficult. So you're not going. At that moment, I panicked. But not just me. My little brother was with us in the living room. And he started laughing at me. But for his despair and a little bit of my joy, my dad said, if your brother's not going, you are staying true. You guys needed to see his face at that moment. It was hilarious. After some minutes of joy, his despair became my despair. It was one more responsibility on my back because he was depending on me. But after a day or two of sadness and extreme despair, I just pulled myself together and thought, I won't miss this opportunity for nothing in the whole world. I decided that I, I was going to do what I do best. I was going to convince them. I was going to convince them that yes, I can go to the final and pass my exams. But then I started to think, how? How would I convince them? What would be my strategy? And in the middle of that, my head was all about the game. The soccer game that would change my life forever. But then the strategy continued. The thinking continued. Should I go straight to the point? Like a power shot. But no, that time I, need, that time I needed to be more delicate. Or maybe I could lead her to what I want to. Tell her why. Why I needed to go to that soccer game. Knowing that I would get her yes. <gasps> like a placed shot. But no, it was too many variables. So many targets to aim. How? How would I convince her with all those unpredictable things? Unless, if I could apply for a more audacious way. I could throw everything up and just show her that they could all fall into place. Like a Panenka penalty. It was decided. That would be my strategy, my hope. And that was it. I went to her, again. And when I mean her, it is because we all know that moms always have the final answer. They are like the goalkeepers and also the referees, the strikers, the club president, the soccer owner, etc. Okay, I'll continue. The, import the important thing is that she believed in me. She saw my eyes glowing while I, while I explained. Practically begging her, begging her to let me go and asking her for her trust that I would make everything fall in the right place in the goal. So it was decided. I lift the ball high in the air. With the allowance of my mother, we entered the second half of our adventure. We now have more 45 minutes until the end of the game. Now, we were against another competitor. We were against time. We had about two weeks to find and buy airline tickets. Just remembering I needed to study also. The problem at the moment was the airlines that were in full capacity to Lima. For God's sake, like people were going from Rio to Lima by bus. That is like too far. Like look here in the map, too far. But with a magical play, my dad managed to dribble the problem of our trip to Peru. We needed to go down to Santiago in Chile and then fly up to Lima where we were going to arrive in the day of the game. By mistake, when the game started, there we were, in the middle of the Argentinians' River Plate supporters. And when the referee blew the whistle, I felt like I had already won the fight. Like I had scored the penalty and the ball had fallen in the right place. But again, lucky me, at the beginning of the game, River Plate scored the first goal. 14 minutes of the first period, remembering I was in the middle of River supporters. In the middle of them. Yeah, it was very disturbing to listen to them screaming. Very pleasant, but not. In the break time, me and my family, we were able to move to the other side of the stadium, where we sit with Flamengo supporters, our supporters, 
and the second half started. We were still losing, and the time was passing. Passed, 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 and nothing. Nothing. Not just one little goal. When I realized the game was about to end, I looked back and asked a fellow supporter how long we still had left. He looked down and answered, about four minutes. So I looked up, practically saw the ball that I lift falling apart. My thought was, I will fail my school year for nothing and my mom will kill me. But just when I looked down, there was a salvation. Bruno Henrique, that's the name. A Flamengo's player was going all in. He dribbled four, four of River's players, sent the ball to a Hascaeta that was practically in the end of the field, but managed to send the ball in the area. And who was there? Gabi Gol, our main striker, that easily just scored a goal at 89 minutes of the game. Everybody got crazy and relieved. We were going to extra time. We still had a whole world of 30 minutes. However, we were practically still celebrating the first goal when Diego, our midfielder, made a long pass from the center field to Rivers area. And who was there? He, always he, again, Gabriel Barbosa, the name of the striker that scored the second goal. It was magical and 90 plus two minutes of the game, three minutes after the first goal, we survived, we won. America was red and black again. It was ours. I won the first game. I won America, but I didn't win my mother's game yet. Yet. In the following day, I stayed in Lima, remembering I still needed to do my final chemistry exam. In the following day, I arrived at Sao Paulo. I think it was 1.30 a.m. But I just got home at 3, almost 4 a.m. And my exam was at 7 a.m. So I had less than three hours of sleeping until it. But as the good student that I'm not, I used that time to study. Which almost made me cry. Because I realized how I wasn't prepared for that. So it was time to go. I arrived at my school, found my exam class, said hi to my chemistry teacher, who wanted to kill me because I lost her test to a stupid soccer game, as she said. So there I saw that my charm and persuasion wouldn't work as it used to with my mom. The test started. My heart was bouncing out of my chest. I felt like I was still in the game and I was losing it. So I did what all high school students do in moments of despair in a test. I guess 80% of it. Please, mom, skip this part. But okay. When the time had finished, I went to my teacher's desk, handled her the paper, and stayed there, looking at her. If I have a smile, like this. Like, huh? Huh? Can you give me a grade, please? Okay. She saw how terrified I was of failing it. But like all good stories, we always need a little bit of drama. Just like in Flamengo's game, she corrected my test, handed me the paper with the grade, and I needed exactly 4.7 to fail out of 10. And to my despair, my grade was 4.5. 4.5. Which means at that moment, I had already failed. I had lost the game. I missed the penalty. But in fact, the game hadn't ended yet. It was 90 plus two minutes. I used my strategy to convince my teacher to show her that I deserved those 0.2. Even if I didn't. However, the art of correct persuasion was able to pass the ball to me, just like Bruno Henrique to Hascaeta and Hascaeta to Gabigol, and I scored my goal. She gave me the grade, I didn't fail. The ball fell in the right place. It didn't cover the goalkeeper, didn't hit the post, and fell in the goal. So I proved to my mom that I could do it. Her trust was not in vain. I scored the goal. But however, now it's time for my mom to step back in our story to give room to my father to step in. 
After that year, my father saw in me the potential of doing marketing and persuasion. So he wanted to test my potential, including me at the family business, at the meat shop, where I started being responsible for the digital marketing of the store, more specifically, the social media. But a few months later, one opportunity appeared at the sales team, and I joined it, remembering I was also keeping school. In the sales area, I could score many goals, using the three tools I have told you guys at the beginning. I was able to conciliate three worlds using the three tools. I had time to study, and I was also even doing better at school. The communication tool helped me to develop some of my school areas, some of my school abilities, like essays. At the store, I was getting better every day. Every sale was a new learning. The method was helping me in many different ways. With the tools helping me in my personal growth, I was able to just see improvement from now on, from that moment on, in my life and career. And of course, I continue to cheer and follow Flamengo, one of my passions. Communication, persuasion and passion. Those three words I told you guys you need to learn as much as you can from them. Trust me, they can be and they will be very useful to you as they were to me. Cheers. Thank you so much.